The Lakers have been calling around the league with a couple of those minimum contracts they still have on the books, including Mo Wagner, who was their number one pick last year, to try to, when July 6 comes, to have more teams involved in this Anthony Davis trade, uh, to be able to turn what right now is that 23 million plus number into around 32 million um, in cap space on July 6 when the free agent moratorium ends. Yeah, you also reported that the Lakers are trying to buy some more draft picks. Obviously, depth an issue here if they can't get a third big-time star. What else are you hearing as far as what they could do there with the draft just tomorrow? Yeah, even, even if they were able to get to that full $32 million in cap space, they still need to fill out a roster. And an easy way to do that is to have second-round picks. Number one, it's, it's inexpensive talent. And number two, those contracts don't – count against the cap. They're treated like minimum contracts, and they have several million dollars to use uh, to go buy some second-round picks. Typically, you'll see that happen during the draft on the board when a player comes up that they've targeted and, and, they, buy, and they have a contingency with a team and buy the pick. What is it you're about to tell me? I just... I got to be the guy that puts some respect on Rob Polinka's name. Yes, you do. I know you want to be that one guy. guy. Waiting to hear that. Right, like, because, like, we're talking about the inexperience... We're talking about 23 million versus 32 million. Did he know? I would assume that he did know. Okay, you have people that you're paying top dollar to be capologists for the Los Angeles Lakers to tell you things like this. This is the leverage you have when you're the Pelicans. You have a commodity that's already said that he wants to go to the Lakers. That's gonna diminish your trade value some. But let's look at it in reverse. I gave you a couple of players that have health concerns. Brandon Ingram, hopefully he returns from his blood clot situation. He's projected to do so. But remains to be seen how long that's going to be. Lonzo Ball ended the season in street clothes. Okay, so there's some question marks there. I think he did a good job of acquiring Anthony Davis, the big prize in this deal. I love doing TV with you. I love it. <laughs> let's don't fight <laughs> over this. Let, let's do this, though. Let, let's not fight okay. over this part yeah, of yeah, it. Because at the end of the day, I don't know why the audience necessarily cares about this piece of it as much as they care about what are the Lakers actually going to do and can they do to fill out the roster? So let me ask you the question this way. We're sitting here talking about them having to get rid of two of the last three players they have on the roster. Are they better off taking whatever money they have and spreading it around a little, maybe signing two second-level players rather than trying to go all in and get one more big name and then fill out the rest of the roster with minimum contracts? It's the same as when they had Kobe and Shaq. They, had, they paired up with other players that weren't top-level players like Kimba Walker but they are still able to win a championship. And if you look at the West right now, we see Golden State not knowing what they're going to be with Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant situation. You have Denver. They have depth. You need depth in order to win in the Western Conference. So, yes, I would say go out and get other players that can give you that depth instead of focusing on trying to create cap space for another big-time free agent. Jay Will is exactly right. What me media and fans tend to do is play fantasy basketball, and that doesn't necessarily give you the level of depth that you're going to need to build out your roster. So if you're the Lakers, to me, of course you want to get a max player. The problem is I don't think the max players that they would want to sign are going to be available to them. I don't think Kawhi is going to go there. I just don't believe it's going to happen. I don't think Kimba should be in play for them because he's ball dominant. I don't think Kyrie should be in play for them because he's ball dominant. They're going to need guys, <clears throat> and I know this guy's an unrestricted free agent, I know this guy's a restricted free agent, but I'm just using his game for an example. Players like Malcolm Brogdon, who can play off the ball, who can defend in the backcourt, be 50, 40, 90 from the floor. Guys like Danny Green. Like, those are the type of players they need in the backcourt. Because LeBron's going to have a ball. I agree. I don't think they're going to be able to get those guys because they're not going to have the cap space to get those guys, especially if Anthony Davis doesn't weigh his $4 million trade bonus. And you need a third team to interject themselves here into the trade. So if you're the Hawks, why am I giving up you know, a first-round future pick for those three players at the end of the Lakers roster. Like, I don't get anything in return other than just relieving cap space for you. And I got to put respect on somebody else's name. Yeah. We keep talking about LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They also have a guy named Kyle Kuzma. True. He's shown me more promise than Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Agreed Ball. That. Yep. He was a late first-round pick. He's not making the money that these two guys are making. And he doesn't have the health concerns that they both have. Yeah. And he's going to be able to flourish alongside LeBron. There's no question one of the best things to be said about the Lakers' side of this trade is that they didn't trade 
Kuzma. That's the guy they clearly wanted to hang on to, and they did. I'll say this. If you look at, and, and Jay Will, you did a nice job of putting together a touchscreen the other day of what LeBron and AD should be in the pick and roll, and they yep. should be lethal in that. So it seems to me you've got Kuzma. Fill out the rest of the roster with just a bunch of guys who can shoot and play defense. Agreed. Right? That's what you're looking for. You need a bunch of guys who can shoot threes, space the floor, play defense. That's what they would need, I would think, to be the best version of themselves. And if you're Rob Plinka, if you're anybody on that team, like this is, this is long-term I know you hate this, return on investment. Yeah. You're thinking about load management. You're thinking about what Kawhi did for LeBron James. You're thinking about, hey, how do we just get to the playoffs? How do we, how are we in playoff contention? But we need to get to the playoffs. So, knowing what we know now, and a lot of things are going to play themselves out, we would think over the next 36 or so hours, knowing what we know now, where are the Lakers in the pecking order of the Western Conference? I know you're huge on Denver. Where are the Lakers as you look over the landscape of the West? They're, they're, they're definitely legitimate contenders in the West. They've, they've catapulted themselves. You've got two top five players in LeBron and Anthony Davis and a player that I like a lot in Kyle Kuzma. They're going to get the shooting. They're going to get guys to come fill out their roster and be productive. But don't sleep on the Rockets. Don't yes, sleep sir. On, yes, because, sir. Yeah, because the Rockets got eliminated by the Warriors the last few years. That's what I was going to say. So I would have the Lakers third in the West right and now. Denver, Rockets. Like, I know everybody's talking about the Rockets and turmoil between supposedly CP3 and James Harden, but the Rockets are in prime position to win the whole thing next year. Jalen is standing. And you know what else I want to say? Yes. Can people stop overlooking the Golden State Warriors? Jay Rose. Okay. Without Klay Thompson. Okay. Okay. Without Klay Thompson okay. next year. I want to make sure. To win well, it. I want. I want to make sure that Rose corrects me if I'm wrong. If you're going to miss guys like Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson, I'm pretty sure at some point you could get some injury exceptions for those guys, right? Um, well, I, I don't know that for sure. It depends okay. on whether or not they. Re first of all, they have to re-sign Durant in order for that to become an issue.